Do you doubt your faith? Yes, sometimes I really think, did God really mean what he spoke in the Bible? Nothing is mentioned concretely about the Trinity in the Bible. The Trinity said to do this, the Trinity said to do that. It is either Jesus or Father or the Holy Spirit. And forgiveness? Do I believe in forgiveness? Does the world believe in forgiveness? The one who taught us to forgive is God and not man. <clears throat> Only God can forgive. The church. There are so many churches within Christianity. The New Life, the Pentecost, the Anglican, the Protestant, the Eastern Orthodox and many more. What unity are we talking about? We are just building churches one after the other. Mm. But are you aware what led this all to happen? Have you read about the sacred traditions of the Catholic Church? Church history? Let me tell you. Over the 2000 years, that Christianity has grown in, we are understanding the truths of our faith clearer and clearer. Faith and reason is going hand in hand to understand their interdependence. The rule of faith that was handed on by the apostles remains the foundation to all our beliefs of faith. Over the years, the rule of faith has been challenged, tried to be built up even more and contrary beliefs have led to heresies, schisms and issues that the church needed to universally address. Here Amul, read article 2089 from the Catechism of the Catholic Church and find out what each term, heresy, apostasy, Schism mean? Yes. <clears throat> so, Article 2089. Heresy is the obstinate, stubborn, post baptismal denial of some truth which must be believed with the divine and Catholic faith. Apostasy is the total repudiation of the Catholic faith which is total refusal to accept the Christian faith. Schism is the refusal of submission to the Roman pontiff or of communion with the members of the church subject to him. Let's explore the heresies, schisms and issues that the Catholic Church faced during the first seven centuries this episode today. Firstly, let's look at the heresies in the second and third centuries. So first we have Marcionite heresy. This heresy was proposed by Marcion in 140 AD. The main teaching of this heresy was that God of the Old Testament creator and judge and the God of the New Testament, Redeemer, are not the same. He rejected the Old Testament and considered the New Testament as consisting only the Gospel of Luke and the letters of Paul. He also believed that in incarnation, Jesus did not have the real body. This heresy was challenged by Justin Martyr. Let me tell you about Montanism. This heresy was supported by Montanus in the year 170 AD. The main teaching of this heresy was that it gives a location for the Parousia. He considers himself as preparer of the way, an incarnation of the Holy Spirit, thereby committing an unforgivable sin against the Holy Spirit. The heresy 
was later challenged by Pope Zephyrinus. Let me tell you about dynamic monarchianism. This heresy was proposed by Theodocus in year 190 AD. The main teaching of this heresy was God is one and the Son and the Spirit are mere powers, not distinct persons. Jesus was only human being. At baptism, the Spirit descended upon him and filled him with, the, with power to do miracles without making him divine. This heresy was challenged by Pope Victor then. The next is adoptionism. This heresy was proposed by Paul of Samosata in 264 AD. The main teaching of this heresy was that Jesus Christ was adopted as the Son of God and was not essentially the Son of God. This heresy was challenged by Malchian and Antioch in the Synod of 268 AD and subsequent three councils held between 263 and 268 AD. Now, let me tell you about Patripassianism. This heresy was proposed by Noetus in 210 AD. The main teaching of this heresy was that Jesus Christ was identified with the Father. Jesus is the Father in different mode. The Father suffered on the cross. This heresy was condemned by Tertullian then. Let me tell you about Sabellianism. This heresy was supported by Sabellius in the year 215 AD. The main teaching of this heresy was that God is a monad, expressing itself in three operations, as Father in creation, as Son in redemption, and as Holy Spirit in sanctification. Sabellius compares God with the Son which radiates both light and warmth. The Father is therefore the essence and reveals himself as the Son and the Spirit, which are two modes of his self-expression. This heresy was challenged by Pope Callistus. Let's look at a schism in 3rd century. Oh, so schism was due to penitential discipline which was supported by Novatian, a priest of Rome in year 251 AD. He and his companions believed that the lapsed Christians, that is the apostates, who renounced their faith under persecution by Roman authorities should not be readmitted to the church. They opposed Pope Cornelius who held that the lapsed could be readmitted after penance thereby breaking away from the church. Let's look at the issues that were addressed in the 2nd and 3rd centuries. The date of Easter was one such issue. Polycrates had addressed the day of Easter to be the 14th day of Nisan, which need not be a Sunday but any day of the week. Pope Victor in 195 AD addressed the day of Easter as the Sunday following the 14th day of Nisan, which is universally accepted as the day of Easter by the Catholic Church. Mm. And the rebaptism of the members of the heretical groups was another issue. You see, Cyprian and certain bishops of the Roman province of Africa held that converts who had been baptized by the heretical groups need to be rebaptized before they are being admitted back. Pope Stephen had held that 
converts who had been baptized by heretical groups did not need rebaptism. Let's look at the heresies during the 4th to 7th centuries. Oh, so Arianism is a famous heresy. This heresy was proposed by Arius, an Alexandrian priest, and Eusebius, bishop of Nicodemia, uh, in year 315 AD. The main teaching of this heresy was that the word is the creature and that the father and the son are united only in will. This heresy was challenged and condemned by Alexander I, who was Bishop of Alexandria and the Council of Nicaea later on in year 325 AD. Macedonianism. This heresy was proposed by Macedonius. He was the Bishop of Constantinople somewhere in the year 350 AD. The main teaching of this heresy is that the Holy Spirit was created by the Son and hence it was subordinate to the Father and the Son. This heresy was later challenged by Saint Athanasius and the Cappadocian Fathers and the Council of Constantinople in 381 AD. The next is Apollinarianism. This heresy was proposed by Apollinaris, Bishop of Laodicea in 352 AD. The main teaching of this heresy was that Jesus had a human body and sensitive human soul, but a divine mind, not a human radical mind. This heresy was challenged by St. Athanasius, Bishop of Alexandria and the Council of Constantinople in 381 AD. Next heresy is Nestorianism. This heresy was supported by Diodorus, Theodore, Nestorius, who was Patriarch of Constantinople and John, Patriarch of Antioch. The main teaching of this heresy was that the word dwells in Christ's human nature. Christ is two person, divine and human. Human person of Christ is born of Mary. This heresy was then challenged by Cyril, who was patriarch of Alexandria, and in it was also challenged in Council of Ephesus in 400 and 31 AD. Let me tell you about this heresy which was called Monophysitism. This heresy was proposed by Eutychus, a monk in Constantinople and Dioscorus, Patriarch of Alexandria in 440 AD. The main teaching of this heresy was that Christ is one person with one nature that is divine. This heresy was challenged by Flavian, Patriarch of Constantinople and the Council of Chalcedon in 451 AD. Next we have Monothelitism. This heresy was supported by Sergius, Patriarch of Constantinople and Cyrus, Patriarch of Alexandria in 616 AD. The main teaching of this heresy was that Christ has one will, Theandric will. This heresy was challenged by Pope Martin and Pope Agato and the Council of Constantinople in 681 AD. Let us look at the councils during the 4th to 7th century. The Council of Nicaea was called by Emperor Constantine in year 325 AD. 
the decisions taken here were firstly that Arianism was condemned and the date of Easter was fixed and the third the belief of dogma of son being consubstantial with the father was affirmed. The council of Constantinople was called by Emperor Theodosius the first in 381 AD. The decisions taken here were that Macedonia Macedonianism and Apollinarianism were condemned and the belief of the dogma of the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father affirmed. The Council of Ephesus was called by Emperor Theodosius the second and Pope Clementine in 431 AD. The decisions taken here were that Nestorianism was condemned and the belief of the dogma of Mary as the Theotokos and Christ where the two natures are united was affirmed. The council of Chalcedon was called by Martian, a representative of emperor and Pope Leo in 451 AD. The decisions taken here were that monophysitism was condemned and the belief of the dogma of Christ having two natures in one person being affirmed. The Council of Constantinople was called by Emperor Justinian in 553 AD. The decision taken here was that the three chapters writings of Theodore, Theod Theret, and Ibas were condemned. And the Council of Constantinople was called by Emperor Constantine IV and Pope Agatho in 681 AD. The decision taken here was that monothelitism was condemned and the belief of the dogma of Christ having two wills was affirmed. The heresies have helped the church to formulate and teach the articles of faith more profoundly and systematically and help us realize how important sacred tradition and magisterium are as the deposit of faith in relation to sacred scripture. The heresies are still prevalent today. For example, the sect of Jehovah Witnesses, they continue to discard the divinity of Christ and focus on only God the Father as their sovereign God. How can we follow up on these articles of faith? We need to believe and understand the 255 infallibly declared dogmas of the Catholic faith and also be aware of the 102 certain truths not yet defined by the magisterium. As people of God, we all are called to understand the articles of the Catholic faith and express and experience their meaning in the faith we profess. In the next episode, we will be focusing on how these articles of faith have been nurtured in clarity, especially through the doctors of the church, Thomas Aquinas and other contemporary theologians. Please check out the link in the description of this video for downloading a PDF of the 255 infallibly declared dogmas of the Catholic faith and the 102 certain truths not yet defined by the magisterium for your personal study. Thank you.